Welcome to Mile High Reefers, I'm Scott Anderson, and there's been a lot of changes to my tanks since the last update video I made. So today we're going to do a vlog style video and we're going to talk about some of the changes and some of the changes that are to come. Starting with the 210 gallon reef, I'm going to shoot everything on my gimbal today just to make it fast, easy. I'm going to talk behind the camera, not a lot of editing with this video, but just a nice good update. So if you remember, I had a big green bubble coral right here and it has pretty well destroyed the area that was there but that'll all grow back but the bubble coral was shading out my huge squamosa clam killing the area and was giving me problems with my euphelia garden so i decided to move it and i moved it clear over here so we are kind of center of the tank, right where that huge area used to be. And that was a really nice coral, but it was too big for this area. Plus, when you have a nice big showpiece like this bubble, it's really cool to be able to show it off like this. Now, one thing this bubble is doing is it's kind of killing off some of the Duncans in here, and that's something I need to think about. But as for the rest of it, it's going really well. The Euphelia garden on the left side of the tank is doing well. I still have the huge rose bubble tips sitting on the top of the tank. The Montes are looking reasonably good, but I've been having alkalinity problems in my tank. So you can see this one's lost a little bit of color. There's a little bleaching. And when I did the big movement, I went ahead and fragged everything. So you'll see some of the tips are kind of broken off and stuff. And that's just a result of the fragging and my little euphelia garden over here just isn't as doing as well as i'd like because it's all shadowed out and of course i still have a bunch of those brown flatworms in here and that's completely because i need to find a predator to take care of him we'll talk more about that in a minute and then if you remember i put that big fox coral in here and you can see it now it looks amazing i love this fox coral all of the fish are doing really well. All the tangs are doing well. One of my purples getting a little skinny, so I've upped the feeding schedule on these guys. But otherwise, this tank is killing it. Here is the 24 gallon. Um, I've done some rescaping since the last update on it, but it's looking really nice. This tank does really well. Uh, a couple little things. I've got a little bit of hair algae on this back right side. It's not really a problem. A little bit of Aptasia I need to deal with in here, but for the most part, it's doing reasonably well. The light is coloring up the coral nicely. That is the Akamai LRM, and then I have the Akamai KPS pump in here, and it is doing a great job. So I'm loving the way this tank is going. The biggest change is I have started doing water changes on this tank again. You know me, I'm not big on water changes unless my testing tells me to do it. Well, just due to my simple lack of time to test, I have found it easier just to change out a bucket of water rather than try to test and dose. So yeah, it's just turned out to be easier on a small tank. The big tank, I'm still testing, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. All right, here's the five gallon tank I talked about setting up as a rock anemone tank. And I think I'm gonna throw some mini maxis in here too. It's got a bunch of really high end rock anemones in it. It's doing really well. Other than the rock anemones don't seem to wanna live on the rock. No big deal, not too worried about it. But I do wanna talk about the rock for a second. That rock is really cool. And probably some of the rarest rock in the aquarium hobby right now. This is Black Rock by Walt Smith, and I think it looks incredible. It's black with a little bit of purple in it, and if you're interested in some, there's a link to aquarium supply distribution down below. They should be able to help you out, although I don't know how much of this is actually being produced. All right, so when I talked about the 210, I talked about how I still had those brown flatworms. They're not necessarily a big problem, but they need to go away. They don't hurt the corals, but they do look ugly, and it's just not something you want in your tank. So I ordered six yellow rasses to hopefully take care of that problem. 
Well, instead of yellow rasses, I was substituted six moon rasses. These things are absolutely beautiful. This, they swim really cool, but they are not reef safe. So I've got to get rid of them. You'll see right now I've got some mesh just kind of hokily stuck on there so that the fish can't jump out. But these guys will be going to a local fish store here soon where they can be sold off and hopefully I will get some yellow rasses later. This is one of the problems of importing your own stuff from the wild. Sometimes you get substitutes. All right, frag tanks are dirty. They're all gonna get cleaned up after I'm done. There's nothing real special in here right now except for maybe this branching Sophastria back there. It's pink, it's branching, it's amazing. That came from Tropical Pet Oasis in Parker, Colorado. It is amazing, I love that coral. But everything else down here, coral-wise, is doing well. It's just kind of a mess and I'll be cleaning it soon. All right, so sorry about the background noise. You probably hear the air conditioning running. It's just loud in my sump room. Is my calcium reactor is no longer able to keep up with the calcium and alkalinity demand on the system. So as soon as this video is done, this calcium reactor is coming off of here. I'm out of CO2, I'm done trying to keep up with it. I've ran my pH really low, I ran the affluent out of it really fast and it just cannot keep up. My corals are suffering from it. So the calcium reactor is coming off and in the calcium reactor's place is gonna go a reef doser EV4. I'm gonna start dosing calcium, alkalinity, and maybe a couple other things. I haven't decided what, but I think this is gonna be the way forward for me. I absolutely love calcium reactors, but I would have to spend an insane amount of money to get a calcium reactor big enough for my system, and then really a calcium reactor only maintains your levels it does not bring them up or down, so you still end up doing a lot of dosing anyways. So I think I'm just gonna try the dosing pump and see what I think of it. So just while I'm making the video, this storm came in, thought I'd shoot a little video of it. This has become almost standard weather lately. My car's got massive hail damage on them. My roof's destroyed. This is just kind of what I've had to deal with this summer. So this weather's been common and we've been losing power at my house and you can see that battery powered air backup that Ian's holding, hold it up a little more again. Thank you, buddy. You can see that that saved my tank the other day. I've got a pair on the 210. That one was on my QT. I have another one on my 24 gallon and I lost power for six or eight hours the other day with absolutely zero impact. And I think the weather today is a good reminder as to why we need backups for our tanks. Get one of these before your power goes out. You could save thousands of dollars worth the fish, worth the coral, and thanks for watching this episode. Not only first like, comment, subscribe. See you on next one. Peace.